Good afternoon. Good morning, good evening. Hello, it's Lynn here from the Learning English Network. And yeah, it's just Shiny and I today. Shiny, you're going to get a single one-on-one -on -one lesson. Well done. <laughs> I hope you're ready to do lots of reading. Indeed. Okay, good. Then I'm streaming this, so I've started the stream. Lucky you. I'm, I love your attitude, lucky you. I think it's great because <laughs> some people get really scared when I say, oh, it's a single one-on-one -on -one session. Like, oh, no. <laughs> great attitude. Okay, so let's just have a look around us. Now, can you see the surrounding here? Can you see where I've brought us? Or is it all just um, white? I know, I know you can't always see... the surround but I'll I'll video it for you and then you'll be able to see it later maybe now I wanted to find uh, an exhibition here which would be more about our topic but anyway it's it's a general thing okay you can't see anything well we're actually in the Science Museum in London okay so if you watch the video later when I get round to publishing it it always it would be great if YouTube could just publish the video as soon as we stop streaming but it doesn't and therefore it's not an automatic thing for me to pop in and just open it up to the public I have to wait and then I forget and then I end up doing four or five of them all at once but keep an eye open on the channel you'll find it under the, um, the let's talk about it sessions okay and then you'll see what you're missing <laughs> But you'll have to take my word for it now. We are in London. We're at the Science Museum. And this one is about the sort of development of mankind because I couldn't find one that was about the brain. Maybe I need to go to the Natural History Museum and see if I can find uh, a place there. But we're going to carry on talking about the brain. And if you remember last week, we, we started discussing the brain and alcohol. Can you remember? Yes, I remember. Irene is here. Ah, okay. Hopefully she'll ma manage to get to me. If not, I'll send her a teleport. She's got the link, so she should be able to find us. Okay, so we're going to explore this uh, idea of how alcohol affects the brain. But first, I've got some questions for you. So maybe we should send Reem a teleport. That way you're not answering every single question. <laughs> Okay, let's find Reem online. I'll offer her... Ta oh, I'd better stand up first. Hang on. Otherwise, she'll end up under the floor. Ah, Reem, you did it. Well done. I'm very impressed. <laughs> Hello, Reem. Take a seat. So, can I hear you? Can you hear me, Reem? Hello, Leanne. Hello, Kira. Hi. Well, it's just Shiny and I today. Shiny thought she was uh, on a date. <laughs> By the way, you don't say in date. You say on a date. On a date. And that would be more sort of girl boy stuff. Um, so uh, you'd just say, yeah, I don't know what you'd say. Um, it's not just us anymore. That would be better. Um, that would be more accurate. But to date someone is more kissy-kissy, huggy-huggy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Reem, um, can you see the surroundings? Or is it all just a white blank screen for you? No, no just white and the glass uh, chairs. Okay. Chairs. Okay. Well, you'll have to take my word for it, too. Today, we're in the Science Museum in London. If you watch the video later, you will see what I can see. <laughs> It's it is oh, a big oh, ask for your, I know, but it's a big ask for your um, bandwidth to be able to res this kind of imagery. I'm afraid. Um, I have contacted the developers to see if they can improve it for other users. The other thing you can do is try the alchemy. Um, I found this doesn't work with Firestorm, even for me. Uh, but with alchemy, it works perfectly. 
so maybe give that a go as well but anyway you'll take my word for it but we're going to carry on talking about um, the topic from last week which was alcohol and the brain if you remember at the end of last week's session we started discussing alcohol and the brain and I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions okay what do you think I would mean if I said uh, he drinks too much. What do you think I'd be talking about? Uh, we, uh, uh, we think about uh, alcohol. Alcohol, yes. Yeah, to drink sometimes, of course, can mean drinking. A, I've, I have a cup of tea here. Uh, I'm drinking the tea. But when we start using the word drink, on its own without the context of what we're drinking it's important to drink five glasses of water a day at least uh, it's important to drink enough to keep hydrated then we're talking about fluid in general but when we talk about drinking as a specific topic we tend to mean alcohol so what kind of ways can we say about what can we say if we think someone drinks too much what sort of things can we say if we think they drink too much? Any idea? Uh, uh, I forgot the word. Uh, just, uh, just a moment. That is the. Uh, well. Uh, there are words to describe people with this, but... Okay, no problem, Shiny, don't worry. Don't call him stupid, he's your lovely hubby. <laughs> you married him, he must be all right. <laughs> okay, so what we do say is you can say that someone has a drinking problem. It sounds strange, I know, but you could say he has or she has a drinking problem. And again, if you hear that, they mean alcohol. They don't mean water. They don't mean coffee. You might say he drinks too much coffee. He shouldn't drink as much coffee. But if you say someone has a drinking problem, it means you think they drink too much. Now, if somebody has a drinking problem, then they are literally addicted to alcohol. And then we have a special word for people who are addicted to alcohol. Any idea? Alcoholic. That's it, yes. Alcoholic. Yeah, alcoholic. If somebody is an alcoholic, they have a medical condition. They are addicted to alcohol. It's a strange thing because if somebody's addicted to drugs, we don't call them a drugaholic. <laughs> we call them, I don't know, a heroin addict or a cocaine addict or a marijuana addict. But for alcohol, it gets this special word, alcoholic. And that term, holic, we sometimes play with. I'm a chocoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a chocoholic. <laughs> I, or a, a coffee-holic. <laughs> it just means I'm addicted to chocolate and coffee. <laughs> but if somebody's called an alcoholic, they have a medical problem with alcohol. Okay, so talking about alcohol, here's a where question. Where might you hear someone shout last orders and what do they mean? If somebody shouts last orders, where are you? What do they mean? Any ideas? In a restaurant. Not in a restaurant. It wouldn't normally happen in a restaurant. Are we? You're on the right lines. You're in the right uh -huh. industry. <laughs> okay, you'd hear it in a pub. So in a pub, if anybody shouts last orders, it's your last chance to go up to the bar and order a drink because the pub will be closing or their licensing hours now it's 
rare nowadays with licensing hours, but pubs still close. There are very few, even though they are allowed to open 24-7, there are very few who actually do. I mean, who wants to work 24-7 and who wants to serve people who want to drink at three o'clock in the morning? I know I wouldn't. <laughs> so last orders is still uh, heard and sometimes all they do is ring a bell. Literally, there's a bell on the bar and they go ting-a-ling-a-ling and that means get your drinks in now because you won't be able to order anything in five, ten minutes. Okay. What might I mean, what might someone mean if they say one for the road? Okay, shiny, one for the road? Uh, I mean, uh, car sharing? Nope. Car carpooling? Nope. No. <laughs> I like it, that would be good, but sadly not. Think about the topic today. What might I be offering you if I offer you one for the road? Uh, uh the, the, they, um, they try to organize the, the queue. Nope. To, it's simply, you know. would you like another drink before you go? So it would be again like a final drink, one for the road, which is very naughty if you think about the road and driving. You shouldn't drink and drive, but it's just a saying we have. Uh, oh, come on, just one more for the road. That's when you say, no, thank you, I have to go now. <laughs> and one last one, which is a little bit of fun with time. What would I mean if I said the morning after the night before? Dawn. So that, that would be literal, but what would I mean if I said it that way? I would say dawn. Oh, it's dawn. Dawn is always the morning after the night before. This has got a specific reference. Oh, no. I'm suffering from the morning after the night before. Drunk? Yeah, drunk is all it you means have. you were drunk the night before and now you're suffering. <laughs> So what do we call it when somebody suffers? From having drunk too much. Hey there. Well, you can have a headache from drinking too much coffee. No, there's a definite special word for when you're suffering from having drunk too much the night before. Generally, you wake up. Yes, you've got a headache, but we don't call it just a headache. It's called something else. You have I a think a movie. A movie. Yes. Yeah, there was a movie called it. Yeah. That, can yeah, you remember? What's that? Yeah, I uh, no, I... Uh, it's on the tip of your yeah, tongue. <laughs> We call it a hangover, okay? A hangover. You are That's hungover, it. yeah. Yes, and it has sequel. Yep, hangover one, hangover two. I haven't seen them, uh, but they're meant to be quite funny, and if a bit puerile. <laughs> when they come free on telly, I'll probably watch them one day. But yes, a hangover, you are hungover. And that is only when you've been drinking. No sympathy from me if you get a hangover, okay? It's your own fault. You shouldn't have drunk so much. <laughs> okay, but there is a serious... I mean, it's drinking's kind of nice. You know me, I drink. I drink beer. I drink wine. Sometimes a brandy. But drinking has serious consequences. And that's what we're going to read about today. So... I'm going to... Shiny, you are here first. Let me give you the text to read, okay? Okay, Shiny, whenever you're ready. I... Uh, yeah, thank you. We've all been there. We've been all there. It's the morning after a big night out and you are battling to remember anything you did or said. But why? What happens inside your brain if you have too much to drink? Preventive health expert Dr. Rose Walker 
says alcohol alcohol degenerates cells rapidly, and this degeneration mainly affects the liver, heart, and brain. Good. Um, well done. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Let me unmute. Okay. Well done. Um, you struggled with this phrase, but let's just look at preventive health. Preventive health. Try it. Preventive health. That's it. Yes. That's we'll it. talk about that in a second. But you, you didn't like, we've all been there. Um, you said, you said it correctly and then you're brain corrected it to we've been all there mm -mm. we've all been there is a kind of throwaway phrase oh we've all been there uh, we've all suffered from that okay so everybody who's been to university and has had to study till three o'clock in the morning before a test or to revise as they should be doing but often to study uh, you can say oh we've all been there as in everybody who's been to university has had that experience. Okay, so just say it, get your brain to accept it's correct. We've all been there. We've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> so if somebody's moaning at you and it's something you've also experienced and you know lots of your friends and family have experienced it, we've all been there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, preventive health. What do they mean by preventive health? What's a preventive health expert? You, you do something good to your health and prevent you from being ill. Yeah, it's about having a healthy lifestyle uh, rather than worrying about doing something and becoming ill. Think about what you can do in order to be healthy. Um, there's a lot of discussion at the moment in the NHS in the UK about preventive health. Should we be doing more about preventive health than treating all these illnesses like diabetes uh, that are lifestyle illnesses often? Not always, but quite often. Uh, they're talking about bringing in a sugar tax to reduce the amount of sugar people are eating um, in food and in sweets and in fizzy drinks. Yeah? Preventive rather than reactive. Okay. So any questions about the text? No? Okay, then um, Reem, are you okay to, re to read? Reem, can you hear me? Oh, I'm not sure if Reem can hear. Okay, so Shiny, if you'd like to carry on reading. Oh, no, okay, Reem is, okay, no, it's all right, Reem's with us. <laughs> Don't forget to say yes and let me know that you can hear me, otherwise I'll presume you've gone off to make a cup of tea. <laughs> okay, so Reem, when you're ready. Yes, do you hear me? Uh, hello? Hello. Do you, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, just the bottom. I I press the bottom uh, of mic, but uh, don't want to be uh, on. Yes, I will be now. According to Doctor Walker, Walker, if you do a cut a scan of alcohol spray, al alcohol spray at uh, age forty, uh, and uh, compare that to the brain of normal. 40 years old, they, there would be much less uh, t uh, tissue, uh, tissue in the brain. Uh, basically, alcohol rot, alcohol rot the brain. Uh, in fact, uh, chironic uh, cumis cum, 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 c
unit precipitation of alcohol has been linked to a high mark. Very good, well done. You got some tricky words in there. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at a few of them. Now, alcohol, yes, we do say alcohol and the consumption of alcohol, but in the text here it's alcoholic. So, alcoholic's brain. Try it. Alcoholic's brain. Brain. Alcoholic brain. Yeah, if you say Brian, then that's somebody's name, like Brian, uh, our friend. Um, Brian, my name is, <laughs> okay, so brain, your brain, then 40 year old, a 40 year old, I am a 40 year old, try it, that's it, so you can say I'm 40 years old, or I'm a 40 year old, so it becomes singular when it's being used like an adjective, okay, then the next one, it's a hard K sound, chronic. Uh, chronic. chronic. Chronic, yeah. It's a funny word, chronic. Um, in health terms, it means severe. So it's a negative word in health terms. Uh, something that comes back again and again and is very debilitating is a chronic illness. In the UK, we sometimes use it to say something was rubbish. Okay. Oh, that film was chronic. Oh, that joke was chronic. Oh, the book was chronic. <laughs> what a chronic joke. But chronic in health terms means severe. Okay. Uh, often you might have a bad cough. Go to the doctor um, again and again and again. And eventually you get diagnosed with chronic bronchitis. Okay. Chronic bronchitis is where the your um, breathing is severely affected, okay? But it means it's practically incurable. Okay. Okay. Then the next one, okay, the verb is to consume, to consume something, to eat or drink, or even uh, we're consuming electricity uh, to use, if you like, okay? But this is consumption. 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 Yes. yes. Chronic consumption of the world's natural resources. Okay. So again, the word chronic can be used with consumption. Consume less, live more. <laughs> but consumption, but to consume. Often these word stems change for adjectives, for nouns, for verbs. You have to learn them in context. You have to learn them naturally. Okay. The next one, silently linked. 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 So if you know that website, LinkedIn. There's a website called LinkedIn. Silently. Okay. And then the last one is the horrible chronic disease Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Try it. Hi. Yeah. Have you heard of Alzheimer's? Uh, it's in a kind of air. It's again a chronic oh, illness. Yeah. It's a chronic disease. Uh, And it was named after the guy who, yeah, it's it's a kind of dementia, Demen dementia, okay, with a T, I'm afraid, sorry, dementia. But the guy who discovered it uh, and actually saw it as a brain disorder, as a chronic brain disorder, it was rare, but sadly it's becoming more common, the guy who discovered it is Dr. Alois Alzheimer. So, as often happened in the past with diseases, the person who first suffered from it or the person who discovered it gets to name it 
or it's named after them. They've kind of stopped that now, but uh, it was named after the guy who discovered it. Okay. Dr. Alois Alzheimer. Another topic that's very current in the UK is the worry about the increase in people's longevity and the increase in this awful disease, Alzheimer's. There's no cure, it's a chronic brain disease. Okay, Okay. so we might uh, read about that next week. I'm not sure, I haven't decided if it might be a bit too oh, depressing. <laughs> But maybe it's an interesting topic. It's very current. So maybe we'll read about that uh, next week. OK, so nicely read. Any questions about the text? And if you notice, the word chronic comes in here, chronic consumption. And that's it, making it negative, as in too much consumption, too much drinking. Um, do you all know what a CAT scan is? Yes. What do you think of when you think of a CAT scan? Yes. I think uh, is a uh, arm uh, for the, the head is the brain brain <laughs> for the brain yeah well it's a special kind of x-ray but it's not just for the brain okay um you've fed into a oh ali's wanting to join us so let's get ali here okay um the cat scan it's what they call a uh, computer oh I'm, I'm having to look at it uh, CT scan or CAT scan. Uh, it's. Oh, hang on, make sure I that. Okay. Computerized tomography, it's called. Okay. So it's a special kind of x ray. Not just for the brain, but yes, it shows up soft tissue. X rays used to show bone, broken bones, maybe torn muscles, but this actually shows soft tissue. Uh, and CAT actually stands for Computerized Axial Tomography. That's what the CAT in CAT scan stands for. But they, they do a cross-section of the whole body. It's like you've been sliced. <laughs> and they're very noisy and very horrible. I don't like them. I've had, have you ever had a CAT scan? Either Any of you? Hi, Ali. Nice to see you. Shiny, have you ever had a CAT scan? Uh, I'm not sure because I had a surgery last year and uh, I had a, you know, I, I, I lie down on the, uh, a thing like a bed and they send me to that machine. It's like a tunnel. It's like a tunnel. And That's a CAT I scan. Like yes, absolutely. And you're not allowed to move. You mustn't move. Not an inch. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to start it again. I had one last year too, Shiny. Horrible things. What about you, uh, Reem? Have you ever had a CAT scan? Okay, good. That's good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's not something I would recommend. <laughs> um, here's a picture of one, the CT scanning machine. It's, it looks like something out of Star Trek. It really does. <laughs> what about no. you, Ali? Have you ever had a CAT scan? Yeah, it's not a competition. Absolutely. Ali, can you hear us? Can we hear you? Have you ever had a CAT scan? But Leon, it is a uh, 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 the, the tube uh, it glows? Yeah, it glows and it makes a funny noise. And as you're fed through it, it takes cro cross sections, x-rays of your whole body. 
including the soft tissue. That's what makes it different to x-rays, even though it uses the same similar kind of technology. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah. And they've even done CT scan. I, I've just found a picture here. They did a CT scan on a cat, a big cat. <laughs> oh, bless him. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but that's a real cat scan. It was a lion. But luckily, they don't have to strap you in like that when you're... Oh, they must be very brave, that technician. <laughs> okay, but if you'd like to read about what a, B a CT scan is and what it involves, if you've never had one, then Booper website has it. Okay. And um, it will tell you what it's used for as well. Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, it's real. No, I can remember it. Uh, it just pro cropped up in Google Images. But I can remember it on the news. They had to do this. It's what we should be doing for animals, trying to help them. <laughs> rather than just trying to eat them all the time. Okay, now, I'm not sure if Ali... Ali, can you hear us? Are you able to speak today? Or are you... Is your boss coming? <laughs> is your boss listening? <laughs> okay, Ali, I can't hear... Or I can see you, but I can't hear you. Okay, so I'll put 222 and shiny. You'll have to be the next one to read. Okay. So, shiny, if you'd like to read the text. Alcohol can have a dramatic impact on memory, according to a 2004 U.S. National Institute on the research paper Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. The paper revealed decades of information on alcohol and brain health. Alcohol primary, primary uh, interferes with the ability to form new long-term memories leaving intact previously established long-term memories and the ability to keep new information active in memory for brief periods. The paper states. Thank you. Very good. Well done. Yeah, a little bit of scientific uh, English today. Don't be frightened to um, ask what anything means because I have looked this up. Remember, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> Okay, the first word you struggled with there is primarily. Primarily. Primarily, yeah. The first thing that would happen or the first thing you should do is primary. And primarily, it's, again, that lovely adjective, uh, uh, sorry, adverb. And it means mainly. It's the same as mainly. So alcohol mainly interferes or alcohol primarily interferes with this particular ability of the brain. Okay. And then interferes to interfere with something. interferes that's right sometimes um, your bandwidth interferes with your ability to speak or to listen yeah the the, the computer's working but your bandwidth interferes with your ability to take part in sessions <laughs> okay and they're talking about long-term memories and short-term memories a lot here. So do you know what the difference is between a long-term memory and a short-term memory? Anyone? 
any ideas? What's your short, what do you think your short term memory is? How many things do you think your brain can remember short term? Anything but knowledge. Kind of, sort of, but no, your short term memory is very limited actually. They reckon about ooh, seven to eight things for about 20 to 30 seconds. For the normal brain. What about your long term memory? What do you think the. Oh, what do you think the. Um, capacity of your long-term memory is. Uh, like knowledge, our experience. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, they, they reckon long-term memory is pretty much indefinite. And unlimited. I'm not sure if I agree because my brain doesn't work like that. But if I knew how to access the long term memory better, maybe, uh, then I should be able to store an unlimited amount of knowledge uh, for an indefinite period until the day I die with a healthy brain. Now, it's very interesting for learners because it affects your ability to learn English. Um, you'll learn, you probably like me, with new words, you struggle to learn them. Because you look at the word, you read the word, you look it up, you look up the meaning, it all pops into short term memory. And that's why when you next see the word, you think, oh, I know I've seen that word before, but I can't remember what it means or how to pronounce it or when I heard it or when I saw it first. And that's because it's not been put into your long term memory yet. So basically, your brain needs to convert your vocabulary and your grammar and the things you learn in a session like this. They need to it needs to move it, shift it from short term memory to long term memory. And that takes time. OK. Memory consolidation takes time. That's why you have to be patient with yourself when you keep forgetting vocabulary. You've got to get your brain to move it into long. And once it's in long term memory, you shouldn't ever lose it. <laughs> uh, so, although it takes time, but uh, do you mean that we can manage it? Yes. Like control? You can control it by exposing yourself to that same word, using it several times in several different ways. It's more likely to form a long term memory. And I'm not kidding you when I say there are little critters around running around your brain making those connections as we speak. However, if that connection isn't used, then it will snip that connection because you've only got so much in your short term memory. It tries to protect the brain. It tries to keep it updated all the time. It's a bit like refreshing your cache kind of thing. It will snip unused connections um, until they're actually in long term memory. And that's why you really have to work hard at learning a new language. Uh, I don't know why it's easier for children. Maybe their brains retain things better or there's not it's not as cluttered in the long term memory. <laughs> it's all new. So everything's saved and then we get more clutter and we but it's all in there somewhere. It's in there. You've just got to make the brain sit up, take notice, store those memories, keep them in long term, keep using them regular, regular, regular practice. OK. That's why I do a daily session. Us? I'd love to do one every day, but I have to have a break at the weekend. But that's why I do daily sessions, because it's what you need to really learn a language. You need to wake your brain up, activate what you've learnt, get it into long term memory. <laughs> 
Okay. Agree. Uh, okay. to to keep the something uh, long as long as in your mind is to do it constantly. Do you think that children's brain uh, is more uh, flexible than adults' brain? I think it's just less cluttered. Just and children are actually more interested in learning. We, we get lazier as we get older. Um, and so our brains are like, oh, no. I mean, why do people not learn new languages? There are lots of people who don't learn the language of the country they're living in. Why? It's because we get a little lazy. <laughs> I sometimes say to my hubby after a German session, my brain's full. <laughs> But it's not true. It just needs to. It's like going to the gym. You exercise it. You keep exercising it. The more you know, the more you will know. And we overthink things. Yes, we have pre pre uh, conditioned our brain for certain sounds, for certain word forms. Uh, so it's more conditioned. Whereas they talk about elasticity with children's brains. But I think that, you know, with a bit more hard work and pushing, we are as capable as children to learn new languages. I really do. To overthink something, yeah. <laughs> okay, Reem, are you okay to read? Yes. Okay. Yes. that of alcohol consume increases uh, so does, uh, does the man magnetic uh, does the magnetic uh, magnet of memory imp impairment according to uh, the paper if uh, the radiation recordation drug drugs drugs were tools alcohol would be uh, as a cell cell day more Seljama, uh, Dr. Wicker say alcohol, alcohol in death, uh, memo loss in by uh, description, description of the uh, prime, uh, prime, hypo, hypo, compass, hypo compass, which is uh, housed in the center of the brain. Uh, it's a very important part of the brain uh, for short term, uh, term memory, he said. Now there's a lovely example <gasps> of short term and long term memory, brain. <laughs> Not brine, brain. <laughs> so it was in your short term memory, and then between I... you reading it and Shiny then read something which you listened to, and that disrupted your memory of how to pronounce the word brain. And that's when sometimes you really have to work hard to get that word into your brain and how to pronounce it. So. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a look at each word. Um, magnitude is that first one. The magnitude of something. How large it is. Um, if you've studied mathemat mathematics or physics, we often talk about magnitude of something. How, what's the size? What's the extent of it? Okay, learning English is a daunting task. It's There's a magnitude of the task is daunting. So try it, um, Reem. Magnitude. Magnitude. That's it. Like to magnify something, yeah? To magnify 
to make it bigger, but magnitude is to look at the size of something. Okay? Then recreational. Yes. Recreational. Okay. Recreational. So, recreation. Try recreation. Recreation. Yeah, recreation. So, what does recreation mean to you, Reem? What do you do for recreation? Uh, I don't know the meaning of recreation. Ah, I didn't think you did. Okay. Recreation is just things you do for fun. Speak for fun? Only speak for fun? Yeah, it's something you do for enjoyment. When you're not working, you do something for recreation. Yeah. Okay, so is learning English a recreation for you or is it hard work? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> but hopefully if it's enjoyable, it's more like recreation. Okay. <laughs> but uh, when I try to learn vocabulary and uh, uh, pro uh, pronunciation, the more difficult for me pronunciation. Yeah, I, I, I'd I figured that one out. But that's a case of practice. OK. Oh, Ali had to leave. I'm not sure if he could even hear us, but never mind. I'll send him the link to the uh, recording later. <laughs> oh, you can hear us. OK. We can't hear you, sadly, Ali. We cannot hear you. In fact, you've kind of disappeared now. So I think you have a connection problem. Um. Oh, you just... What you can do is click on the person and then they'll just turn to face no, no. them. Okay? And then you click on the person and you click. There you go. Once you've clicked on a person, you can make your head move around. <laughs> if you watch the video later, uh, I'll show you what's, what's, how to do it. Okay? Okay, you can get you can get the avatar to follow the mouse. Right click on someone and then get you've got them following. Okay. Oop. Make sure you don't do that because then yeah. But once you've got it following the mouse, you can make it look around. I sometimes forget to do it though, so don't worry too much about such things. <laughs> uh, I can't know. I'm afraid not. We've got a two, two, two there, but never mind. That's life, as you know, on these uh, sessions. I think you might have crashed, but if you can hear us, it's all good. It's all good. So recreation. Then, uh, Reem, you've got recreational. Yeah, Recre recreation. Mm -hmm. Recreation. Okay, your brain's struggling with that one. Watch the video, listen to it, and practice. Recreational. Recreational. Okay? Okay, yeah. let's, we'll have to move on, though. Um, so, otherwise, we will run out of time. Then, a sledgehammer. I'll be your sledgehammer. <laughs> Great song by Peter Gabriel. Sledge plus hammer. Sledgehammer. I might even have one. Sledgehammer. Yeah, sledgehammer. I've got a sledgehammer. Here you are. Somewhere. <coughs> can, maybe I'll be able to <coughs> wear it. There you are. I'm holding a sledgehammer now. It's a very big, heavy tool. You wouldn't want to use that for brain surgery. Okay. So what they're trying to say is that alcohol affects the brain in a... Oh, there's, there's Ali. I can see you now, Ali. <laughs> alcohol affects the brain in a very heavy way. Okay. So sledgehammer. Then oh, the hammer. next word was... Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah. Doctor. Doctor. Try it. Doctor. That's it, yeah. And then to induce, induced. And the past tense 
is induced. Try it, Reem. Induced. That's better. Induced. Well done. After that, we had to disrupt disruption. So disrupt is the stem to disrupt. But then we talk about disruption. Disruption. That's disruption. It. Very good. And then, of course, brain. Brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I suggest you watch a couple of cartoons called Pinky and the Brain and learn the song. Pinky and the Brain, 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 <laughs> Brain. <laughs> and then part of the brain, and the brain has different parts. It's, it's a, it, the brain's anatomy has its own anatomy. And the hippocampus, hippocampus, Hi try it. Compass. That's hippocampus. It. Very important bit of the brain. Don't damage it. And then housed. It's a silent E, not housed. Housed. Uh, housed. Yeah. Housed. Housed. It's more of a Z at the end. So the brain, remember last week, the brain is housed in the skull. That's it's where it lives. The brain is housed in the skull. The, pra uh, the, the brain is housed, housed in the skull. In the skull. Well done. Yeah, the brain is skull. housed in the skull. And you corrected yourself. That's helping you form those long-term memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. I, Excellent. Times because uh, it is uh, in my long, uh, uh, long memory time, uh, right. Exactly. And it's the only way you'll get things to move from short term to long term, especially new things you're learning when you're not immersed in that thing. So when this session ends in a couple, well, around now, when this session ends, you're going to go back to your normal life. You're going to go back to your normal language and you'll find that the things that you thought you'd learnt in this session will get snipped. They'll get cut. And the only way to really form those long-term memories is to think about the session to think about what you learned maybe watch the recording and really get your brain to sit up take notice i want to remember this this is important to me and if it's important to me it's important to you and the brain will respond it will you'll find things stay longer in your long-term memory the more you use them it's like any kind of exercise. Review, revise, rethink. Okay. Um, well, Ali, yes, you do have to press the microphone button. To speak. button. Hello. Hello. Wow. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, for your long-term memory, think about what you just did. You can <laughs> Okay, I don't know which which viewer you are using, okay, but um, if you're using Firestorm, there's a little speech button and there's a little box in the top right corner. That needs to be ticked so you can click your microphone on and off. If that little box isn't ticked, you have to hold the microphone button down to speak. Depends how you prefer to use the viewer. on. Alchemy, which I'm using today for this session, uh, you'll see in the recording, it's just a button that clicks on and clicks off. But if you watch other videos where I'm using Firestorm, you'll see in the top right corner of the mic button, there's another little square, a little tick box, and that needs to be ticked for click on, click off. But anyway, h how are you, Ali? Are you well? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. I'm sorry, I joined you guys so late and... Uh... I was just exploring different tools. <laughs> I don't know. It was not working on my end. Well, it's working it's, now. I understand. It's typical because we're, we're finishing the session now. <laughs> but... <laughs> it was actually working, but I don't know how to make it work. <laughs> um, whatever you just did, do it again next time. <laughs> is that useful? Sure, is that a useful piece of advice, isn't it? <laughs> Right. What you have to accept with um, the kindly sessions, especially, is there's a lot to learn. 
There's the teleporting, the flying, the walking, the speaking, the sitting, the standing. Um, so it does need a lot of repetition. Uh, and each time you come, especially if you only come once a week, it's like relearning it all over again. But eventually, don't worry, you will get there. Okay. Now, yes, just... I understand. I was, I was a different platform, right? I don't know I'm in, what you guys call it. Second I was life? flying that time. Second... Yeah, no, no, no. I was in Kartli. You invited me uh, in this session. Tell me, I don't know. What... Ah, well, right now, I warn you, you are about 513 feet up in the air. Um, this space here, and I don't know, can you only see white around you? What, kite? Uh, can you only see the colour white around you, or can you see a photograph or pictures? White, 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 okay. white. If you watch the recording of this video, you'll see what you should be able to see. Um, <laughs> which is basically the London Science Museum. We're actually sitting... In my perspective, in my perception, we're sitting in the London Science Museum. Uh, but in your perception, we're sitting in a platform 512 feet up in the air. And um, which means when you leave, you need to use the teleport device. Let me go and stand by it. Otherwise, you'll end up being stuck here. So you click on the teleport device here. How, how can I like um, uh, come, to, come to London? <laughs> <laughs> I um, I use Alchemy, the Alchemy Viewer. It seems to work better, but it does depend on your connection. Okay, um, it's very dependent on your bandwidth. Okay, I found that Firestorm doesn't allow me to see this either. I don't know why. I have contacted the developers, but. Um, Maybe I need to do something, I don't know. But anyway, for me, Alchemy works, Firestorm doesn't. So for this session, if I'm using this platform up in the air, I use Alchemy. And then when you watch the video, you'll probably go, oh my God, <laughs> I didn't see any of that. <laughs> but to get back to the ground, everybody. Uh, yeah, I won't have time now because I'm in... Uh, how, how can I How can I uh, go to the ground? I mean, okay. do I have to can do anything? See, or like... Can you see this black... Thing here in front of me, in front of my avatar. It's like a black S. It's a teleport station. You click on it and then you choose any of the other options. The sandbox will take you to where you usually log in, uh, the quadrangle to the university, crater to the mountain, party to the uh, disco, tabletop uh, is also the mountain. And the pub is, well, it's the pub. You click one. So I'm going to choose the pub. And then you click on the teleport again. You'll see that the mouse has turned into a little uh, chair. Uh, so I'll love you and leave you all. I'm going to the pub, but then I'm going to log off. So thank you for coming. I'll see you next time. Bye. And there I am in the pub. Ta da! It works. Proof of concept. <laughs> Take care. I'll stop streaming now. <laughs>